Hi, this video is based on a Power Automate community thread. So here we have two lists. One is called GWP email contacts and the other one is called GWP distributor list. Okay, so what the user wants here is, uh, the user wants to append uh, the email contacts to the distributor list. So that means um, we need to read the GWP email contacts. So we got one, two, three, four, name one, and then two, name two there. So at the end, under the distributor um, list, the name one should contain all the appended emails and uh, same for the next one also, name two as well. Okay, so for that, I'm going to show you how to build this in Power Automate, okay? So the plan is, uh, to read uh, this on a daily basis and then um, so I'm going to put a scheduled trigger or a manual trigger and then read the GWP email contacts get all the names then find the unique name because we got uh, you know uh, some duplicate names here so when we remove the duplicates we should end up having name one and name two then then what we could do then is we could filter the we could filter the same list as, uh, saying that give me only the name one um, uh, emails. Once we got that, then we can go to the GWP distributor list, and then uh, you know have a look up on the name one exist or not. If not exist, then we can create it and then uh, you know get all the emails happen to that uh, record if the record is already there we could uh, override that existing values to the new list and for the deletion what we need to do again is we need because users can delete here so suppose user deleted name all the name ones here so what we need to do then is we need to delete uh, the distributor list uh, the name one all the entries also so for that we need to look the other way around we need to get all the we need to get the name one then look against the name one exist in the email contact if it is there it's all good news if it is not there that means the user has somehow deleted all the name ones then we can delete that complete entry from the distributor list also okay so let's start building the flow then right so for that um, i have created a email contact so here I got the same scenario like the user described. So I got name one, one, two, three, four, and two name two there. Okay, with the similar email names I used here. So this list is I, I for this list I called email contacts and I got title and email. Okay, and here the distributor list. This is where we need to see our final output. Right. Okay. So let's start building the flow. So for this, I could use a daily daily scheduled trigger so that every day it will look for those changes and keep updating the distributor list. So for the demo purpose, I'm just going to use the manual trigger. Okay. Right. So like I mentioned earlier, the first plan is uh, to read the first uh, list which is the email contact list. So for that, I'm going to use get list items, uh, get items, select the site address, and it call, uh, the, my list is called email contacts. So I'm going to say email contacts. Okay, so like I mentioned earlier, uh, we I need to get the unique names to go and have a look up on the second list to update the record or create the records. So for that, first I'm going to say, okay, give me all the, you know, um, get items from the email contact. So what I'll do is I'm going to rename this. This is all best practice as well. So get email items, get, get, it, get email contacts. get all email contacts okay next step I'm going to use a select filter here okay 
and in the select I'm going to use the previous output that's a value I need to use and I'm going to say give me only the title now so because title is the name then and search for title here it is okay so I'm going to save this flow so before saving it I'm going to say demo uh, list updates save the flow okay so I'm going to run the flow now next okay flow ran successfully and so if we look the select the output so as you can see here I only captured the name on name on only the names I got so this is what I mentioned earlier like we got some duplicates here okay so to remove the duplicate what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a compose here all right okay so in this compose I'm going to say uh, remove duplicate names and under the expression I'm going to use union so what union does is union union need two arrays and then it will evaluate in both arrays to make it into a single array which contains um, you know only the the unique values only okay so for that I need to click on the dynamic content so the select output that's what we are after so you can see select output because we need two arrays for this and my second array is going to be the same okay so that's the syntax here body body of the select and body of the select okay and click okay that so that's done so I'm going to run this now and see what happens here Here it is fantastic news we got uh, we have removed all the duplicates now at this stage okay so the next stage what we want is we want to iterate all these values and uh, get uh, you know the name one so that uh, we can work out uh, for the um, the next stage which I will show you in a minute okay so I'm going to take this just copy this so select everything from the output and copy that so press Ctrl A, Ctrl C. That's the shortcut I generally use. And then I'm going to use a pass JSON step here. Okay. So in this pass JSON step, what I could say here, uh, here what we could do here is, pass JSON and uh, say, names okay then that coming from the previous output so that's the remove duplicate output that's the one we need to map here in the content then for the schema to generate click on the generate from sample place your place your cursor inside press ctrl v that's from the clipboard it's going to copy whatever we copied earlier and click done so that's done now so that means the next stage uh, we what we could do now is we could iterate this now so for that click on the control and then use an apply to each so that's the loop we need so inside the apply to each loop what we want is we want the body of the past JSON step from the previous step so this body we want body of the past JSON names then inside that I'm going to add another compose here so another compose and just call that as the name then that's what we are after so name and in the past JSON step, we can see the title now there. Okay, so let's run this and see, you know, um, what output we are going to get here now. Okay, so if you if you look here now, uh, it's removed the duplicates. Remember, then we pass that to the JSON past JSON step to iterate it in the next loop so here we can see there are two there one of two and two of two if I click on next you can see two of two previous one of one one of one is the first one name one click next name two there okay so what we need to do next is because we got 
that title uh, the name uh, now we need to get the the email the so that means let's, let me go back here so we got the unique names so what i need now is what i'm going to do now is i'm going to say give me the name one all the emails associated with that that's what i'm going to do so that means when i'm going to filter i'm going to use a filter again to say i got the name one now and give me all the emails okay that's the next step so for that again we are in the loop now so for that we need to use uh, the filter array action step okay so i got that now and here i am new from the from is the uh, you know the the whole values of the this step because this contains all the emails get all email contacts so we could utilize that uh, from uh, the previous step so if i look for value see get all email contacts that's the one we need to map here okay so, and then i'm going to say i want to filter against the title so title so that's the title is equal to this name the previous name we got so this name is the previous output this one here the name so if i move the you know cursor over here you can see output of the name which is this step the previous step which contains the title so what we're doing here is i'm filtering all the uh, emails based on the title so i got the title which is name one and say give me all, all of the values then uh, for that so here i could say again rename this and say filter array by name it's good practice always to put some meaningful names okay right so that means it's going to filter it okay so let's run this and uh, see the output of that filter then okay flow ran successfully and um, in, the, in the filter array so we got the first one is a name one and in the filter array output if i click on the output show output here it is so you can see it's returned uh, you know my all my uh, name one values name one name one name one here only name ones i got name one see that so all four values i got the next one if i click on the next so that's name two so we should only have two then so click on the show output so you should be able to see here name two again name two for the next record that's only two there okay but we only want the email only in the next output then so so now we got the filter but how can we get the email then so for that what we want to use again is um, i'm going to use another select here so in remember we are still inside the apply to each loop okay so i'm going to use a select okay so what we are going to do here is select um email by name select emails by name so this is filtering by the name so that contains the email and all the other attributes also there but we only want the emails that's what we want so again uh, we are going to use the body of the filter array this one here from address so in the from we need to use the previous step body of the um, body of the filter array then this is the technique you need to use it here so click on this t sign here okay and map what you need to map here is the email so we know that this contains a property called email there which i'll show you that in my list see my list this column name is called the email so what i'm going to do here is in the in, um, in the map one click on the expression here and type item question mark two square brackets email that's what we need to do so that means i'm i'm saying i know that filter array contains lots of other properties but all i'm interested in is to get the email only okay so I'll place the cursor here and click okay here it is so let's run this and see what's the select by name going to give us then select uh, select emails by name step So we know the first name one 
then filter by array I show I sh uh, already shown the um, the output so the next is the select here it is see I only got the name one uh, emails if you look the next one here click on next the second one see I only got the two uh, you know um, the two emails which are related to the name, name two then okay so what's next we need to do here is click on edit again so now we are ready now because we got the name we got all the emails so that means we can now go back to this list the distributor list and say hey have you got name one here if you got i got the new list you can we can update it if nothing is here i can create it that's how, that's what we need to do here but remember this is an array now so there are different ways you could do it either you could declare a, another variable and to you know to um, um, to uh, append all these strings then so that, that that's one way of or another way is use the expression to remove all the double quotes and um, uh, and the square brackets also so it's it, it depends how we want to use it so I'm going to use uh, the uh, you know the the uh, iterating the array then to get the actual values then so for that I'm going to um, add an initialized variable here. So using a variable, that's a variable here, and initialize variable here. And I'm going to call here emails. And that's going to be a string value. We, we know that's a string value. And here you can rename to say all emails. Okay. And inside the apply to each again, because this returns all the emails as an array format, but we want to, you know, put some, um, uh, put the values like a comma formatted values then. So what we could do here now is we could uh, go back and say like, that might um, slow the operations down, I think. Um, okay, I'm going to remove this. There are different, as I said, um, um, there are different ways to do it. So let's... Um, uh, let's save this go back now and uh, click on that last run just have a look on that um, so here see there are double quotes there and um, then we have uh, a square bracket there isn't it so yeah so you could iterate this and append to an array that's one way of doing it um, or um, I'm going to do use this in a different way now so I'm going to edit this and I'm going to use a compose here and uh, rename this to all emails by name so this returns an array now remember so i'm going to use an expression here so that it's this is a little bit complicated probably but i'll explain um, uh, this what expression i'm going to use here so i'm going to use here like um, replace we know the array contains two square brackets and um, this is an array also this output so for that i'm going to say first string of the output so click on the dynamic here behind the scene and then uh, select the emails my name output see that that's done so that body of that that uh, string and comma okay so then i will put this uh, in my video description this um, syntax then i'm going to say the old text which is a square bracket and i want to replace with two brackets that's one uh, you know uh, one of the expression we need to use so let me take in a notepad and show you that so that's one expression then what i could do then is i'm going to add another replace and getting uh, from this result i'm going to say i want to remove that square bracket now comma blank two single quotes now we have seen there are double quotes also so to remove that again we need to say replace of that result comma 
two single quotes inside double quotes comma uh, two single quotes okay let's copy this so it's a long expression so just go back here again click on the expression paste that and click okay that let's run this and see the result okay okay so that's done the job i think let's see then so show here we, here we go see we cleaned up all that so we got all the um you know the we removed the array uh, the left square bracket right square bracket and the double quotes that's what we removed here this one see the left square brackets and the double quotes we removed using the expression there are different ways you could do it. You could iterate this in an um, in a in an array, sorry, in a for each loop, and append to a string if you want. But that's going to slow up the operation. So I'm I just use the shortcut here. So it's you know it's different ways you could do it. Okay, so that's done. Now we got the name, we got the name, and we got the email. Then okay, the next step what we could do here is inside the loop again. We are going to say okay, I'm ready to update my next distributor list. So for that again, I'm going to use the SharePoint list. And I need to first find, is the record there or not? Is the name one there or not? If the name one is not there, I need to create it or update it. That's what we are going to do. So again, I'm going to use the get items. Okay, so for this, I could rename this a uh, get items distributor emails or say get all distributed emails okay so but we are going to filter by name that so let's rename this again so get all distributed emails by name okay and then here uh, selecting the you know the sharepoint site and uh, distributed list let me check it again yeah, the distributor list and I'm going to I renamed this to title. So I'm still need to use uh, the column name as title. So if you rename it, the original name, we need to still use it. OK, to know that I'll show you a technique. So if you go here and say list settings. And click on the the. Click on the title, see that title there. So it shows that title there. See? So in the top, see the field name is title there. So even if you rename it, you still need to use the title. Okay. Now going back to the for the filter query, which way I'm going to apply now. So here I'm going to say that field name is called title equals okay um, and then the output so the output is the one which we we need to we we know we are going to uh, against the name so that's the name we want here this name so that's name one actually or name two so we are going to filter against that then so here for that we know the name the na name of the compost is called name so we could go here and call uh, use output there are so many combos here, so we need to be careful about that and look for the name output. Here we go, that's the one I need, name output. So the next step we need to use here is, so remember that's the field name I use for title then, remember that. Yeah, that's the title. So if you got an actual field, you need to use an actual field name, whatever the column name is, okay? So my column name is called the title, that's a schema name. If you rename it, you still need to use the schema name. That means you need to click on the settings, go to the URL, URL and find the actual field name there. Okay, so this, this means we are going to look up against the distributor list against the name one then, or name two. Then for that, uh, next step is I'm going to use a condition here. So in the condition, what we want to use here is, I'm going to say, uh, is any record exist or not? So for that, the technique is again another expression we need to use. So that is uh, uh, that is the length expression. The length of, so let me rename this. I'll tell you why I need to rename this here. Just rename this, copy this. 
go back to the notepad again paste that here so what we could do here is this is the expression we need to use length of output that's output of the previous step previous step name is this so all the sp um, the spaces we need to you put underscore in the expression then okay then question mark and then we need to use uh, I think body slash value that's what we need to use here and uh, close that so that should give, give us if it's zero or one if the record is there that will be one one record there if none nothing there in that will give you zero then okay that's the expression we need to we need to look for the count of the record exist against that filter so if the name one exists against uh, the this this distributed list it says so oh, i got one there or if it's uh, nothing there it will give zero so in our instance it's going to give zero initially so go back here and put that expression here Oh, it doesn't like the expression. Let me have a good look. So output or out outputs actually. Yeah, sorry. It should call outputs. Yeah, outputs. Oh, still doesn't like it. So outputs bracket question mark. Let me let me have a look again that. Okay, so that output that bracket. So this bracket finished here. Ah, okay, so what we could do here is um, we could use another way. So click on the expression and type length. We want to find the length of the record. How many, you know, out, how many records is going to filter out. Click on the dynamic. And the previous step is called get distributed by email. Get the value there. This is what it contains that array values from the filter. Oops, got it wrong again. So expression length. Place your cursor inside. Click on the dynamic. Oh, I'm just losing that again. Length. Okay. Click. Oh, it shouldn't change it. Let me let me place the focus somewhere here and come back here I think the editor got a little bit confused here so length okay good click on the dynamic content click on the value hmm, no okay I'm going to copy this that's what we want so just copy that and you can press ctrl X and then type length and paste it here and click click OK that I think one bracket it's extra thing no okay so that's the index we need to use length of the previous output that's this and uh, question mark body slash value okay I'll put this in the video description and that is equal to zero means so if it's greater than zero means we got some record there we got one we assume it's all going to be one record always so if it's greater than zero means we need to update that existing values so go to the update update item step and uh, we can say here uh, uh, the SharePoint site name again here And under the list name, that's the distributor list. That's uh, you know the one we need to update. And the ID. So remember the ID we need to use use is from the get all distributor emailed by ID because that's record. Don't worry about the apply to each because it's coming from the get all distributors list. That's the reason it's going to put an ID there. Okay, we know it's all, always going to be only one record there in the in the distributor list. And in the title, so again, it's the same same title we, we can use. Here we go. That's the one. And the email. So the email we worked out that is here all emails by name. 
and then uh, you know that's the combo the complicated expression we used earlier so that's the one we need to map here for the update so just use the output and look for all emails by output that's done the next step i am show you again we, all you need is a create item so here uh, we need to go and say create item because there is no record there in the distributor list it's the first time so that means we need to update it that means if it's not greater than zero that means it should be zero then that's the reason it comes on the else statement okay and again it's the same list distributor list and then here we know the title is coming from the get all so don't worry about the loop so it's put down the loop then again it's going to be only one record anyway and uh, the same um, um, you know same um, output we need to use so search for output and look for all emails by name okay so i'm going to run the flow and see what will happen so run this flow now ah i made a mistake here I shouldn't have mapped the title because this title need to come from the because there is no record exist so this title need to come from the uh, the first uh, step so what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this and again uh, the create action step so create item okay so here um, I'm going to say the Okay, I'm going to select the site uh, address and then distributor list. Okay, so the title. So the title need to come from the very uh, the very first applied to each. This one here contains the name. That's the one we want because there is nothing there to map. So that's the name we want. So if we look for output for the name so be careful about here there are lots of combos we use so that's why i renamed it all with the right name so that's the name we want name and then here the email so email is uh, you know we got the email here remember all emails by name so again search for the output in the dynamic content and uh, all emails by name okay so here create item so i could rename this to say uh, create new name and email and emails and then here uh, you know what we could do here is update existing um, name and emails so because we are updating the existing one because the record is already there that's the reason we are using uh, the title mapping coming from the existing um, the get all distributor emails by name or you could still map with the same uh, this output also here there is nothing wrong in that okay right I think we are good here we I'm going to test this and uh, see if it's going to work or not okay let's run the flow okay so Let's run the flow and uh, see, uh, you know, it works or not. So let's see then. Okay, so under the if condition, so it's false because there is nothing there. So it should create, so it's created the first one. You can see here and click on the next. Again, there is nothing there, so you can see here name two again here. So this is never going to get executed because nothing in our distributor list earlier for the first very first run. So if I go back here and refresh the distributor list, here it is. Name one contains all that emails, and name two contains all those emails. Because now, if you are going to add, suppose I'm going to add a another new uh, name two again here, name two. And they're going to do test at test.com as another email for name two. Here we go. That's one there. And uh, just run this flow again. So let's edit test manual run again. Okay. So in this instance, what will happen here is 
our there is no uh, no items to create here because there is you know it's still name one and name two so uh, it's applied to each the other loop is working now update so let's go and have a look and uh, refresh this so that should have the name two which contains test at test.com here it is see that now the another one uh, we need to check here is i'm going to delete now name two and i'm going to delete uh, in a test 100 so i'm going to select these two records okay first uh, record test 100 one that's gone and name two also i'm going to delete so that's gone as well okay so what should happen now then it should the name one should only have three records and name two should only have two records right two emails yeah again edit test the run manually okay and uh, go back to the distributor list refresh it so it should have see there is no test 100 there one two three and then there are two emails so that means it's there are only three there and so that's working then yeah and um, i'm i'm going to delete this i'm going to delete again this and i'm going to delete this so let's see then so this is all good test then, you know, good unit test we are doing here. Right, let's refresh this. Here it is, see, it's only got, you know, the uh, each email is only there, rest all we deleted it. Now, the next thing what, what I'm what we want to do now is the deletion part. So what you said mentioned here is I could delete this completely, the name one. So if I delete this name one completely, what should happen? We need to delete from the distributor list also. So that means we need to work the other way around. So for that, what we want to do the for the flow is once this all the updates is done, we should go back and say, hey have you got name one here we we we, uh, we know the distributor list got name one have you got the name one exist in the uh, email contacts here if it's there it's all good news if it's not there we need to delete that record we need to delete from their distributor um, uh, list also so for that what we want to do here is i'm going to edit the flow now so this is all good that's done the next step here is um, I'm going to say again get or can I do it from the same apply to each here let me think about it because we are already in the loop but that is coming from the very first one no we can't do it so I'm going to minimize that and uh, going back here and say um, SharePoint and get items so here we need to look the distributor list okay so we are looking the other way around because we got no control over the delete so we are going to look the other way around now so in the list here I'm going to say give me all the distributor list because that's one I can trust the first one user got full control over it always so here um, uh, you know again rename and uh, say get uh, items uh, distributor list and that we know that names are unique here so the next step what I could do here is I could add a compose here and say give me the title so that's the title i want it's going to put in a loop that's fine because we know that title will contain um, the distributor list name one or name two and we are going to check back this name one exists in the first list so if they're completely if it's remote then we can delete also for uh, delete uh, that record from the distributor list that's the plan so i'm going to check 
so the check we need to do again here is um, e from the email contacts. So remember, that's already here. There. We already worked out that get our email contacts. So what we could do here is uh, we could go back and say, or apply a filter then. Yeah, there are different ways you could do it. Um, okay, I'll, I'll go for a straightforward way. Um, use the SharePoint list again. Um, no, sorry. Um, I'm going to use in a different way this. So let me think. So, yeah. Okay, just use, uh, use uh, SharePoint. Okay. SharePoint and uh, go to get items. So here is the get items. And then select site then the list name you could use the old filter and again using the filter if you want um, so i'm going to use uh, here uh, the get items and here we need to use uh, the email contact okay because this is where we don't know whether that there or not we know it's in the distributor list and then here i could go back here and say title that's a, a column name equals two single quotes then use this compose here we got the title here so we could map either the output of this compose or the title uh, title from the get items distributor list whichever one it is so i'm going to use this output here okay that's done so again um, uh, if the record is not there that means user has deleted all the name one there so that means we need to delete from the distributor list so for that we need to check a condition again here if Go to the expression and say length, two brackets, place your cursor in the between, click on the content, and, um, oh, I still couldn't work out that. Length, click on content, yeah. See that get items from the previous step? The value, that's what we want. So select that and click OK that. OK, here it is. So uh, that's the expression we need to use here. So length of this contains anything there or not so is equal to zero means there is nothing there in the email contacts so that means what we could do then here is we could go back and say delete so use the sharepoint and uh, the action step delete item so where we need to delete from delete from the because it's nothing, uh, we filter the item from the email contacts and we check the length. If there is no record, that means we need to delete from the distributor list. So here, I'm going to go back and say here, um, the list name, I don't want to keep that in the distributor list anymore. So the ID, so where this ID come from? This ID, we can't use this ID, remember? The ID we need to use is from the get items distributor list. That's more important here. So that's the record associated with that to delete. So just search for ID. Don't get the get items. It's get items distributor list. This is the one we want. See this? Here it is. So now um, I'm going to save this flow now and test it. So for testing, what I need to do here is I'm going to go back here from the email list. Suppose use a deleted name one completely. It's nothing there. Okay. And he has added a name to another name to with um, test at demo.com. Here it is. So what should happen then in the result then? This should also delete and name name two should update with the, with the newly added name also. New, newly added, uh, yeah, name uh, which is contains that email, okay? So let's run this flow and see how that's going to perform now. Okay, flow ran successfully here. So let's go back here for the first list. It should only have name two because we deleted the name one. Going back here, I'm going to refresh it. So hopefully the name one should delete. See, name one is gone now. So that's the way we you know, that's other way around we need to look always because the distributor list, we need to filter that, uh, you know, back to the 
parent want where the user always going to update and see is anything there or not if nothing is there that means we need to delete from the distributor list also and that added the second email also so if i may go back and um, you know delete all the name too also what should happen now then so let's run this flow and see so flow running uh, oh, successfully okay it's run now and um, just refresh this see there is nothing in the distributor list when i refresh it it's gone now because i deleted everything now from the email contact so if i may go back and add now uh, like name one test at test.com okay that then another name another new one with the name two with uh, abc at abc.com i'm going to add another one with name two with xy xyz and xyz.com okay and uh, run the flow Okay, flow ran successfully. I'm going to refresh the, the distributor list. You can see here name one test at test.com and name two contains those two emails. So these are the techniques, you know, this is the one of the technique you can use it to update uh, and syncing the email list. Hope this is useful. Thank you for watching.